Hello, Mark Ostwald from ADM Investor Services International. Um, with some thoughts on emerging markets this week, I was uh, uh, at the Global Grain Conference in uh, Geneva earlier in the week and there was a lot of discussion around um, <coughs> the latest fallen angel, namely Chile. And it got me to thinking about how people are now looking at emerging markets, both in terms of uh, currencies, uh, fixed income, and equity markets. So um, I think one of the most remarkable things in terms of uh, um, currency markets at the moment um, is if you have a look at this very first chart I've got here, which compares um, <coughs> the FX volatility, um, um, which is a left-hand scale, um, <coughs> Um, and uh, this is a composite index, and uh, the S&P 500 uh, VIX volatility is that for many, many years we always expected um, currency volatility to be a lot greater than both bond and stock volatility, but these days currency volatility is very, very minimal, um, and that's even true in emerging markets, but that's not always the case, as we've found out uh, with Chile. Um, <clears throat> I think the more remarkable thing is as we head into year end and with interest rates as low as they are, we may have got rid of the stock of um, or whittled down some of the stock of negative yielding debt, but people are still on the hunt for yield. So um, uh, the next three charts are basically looking at that and then thinking about it in the context of where we are. So what we've got here, first of all, is a comparison of the MSCI World um, Equity Index, which one can see basically, we've had a few little corrections along the way, uh, but has been marching steadily higher since the back end of last year when we had the big clear out. Um, but the uh, emerging market profile has been extraordinarily volatile. Now, some of those emerging markets, obviously, uh, it's been very, it's been the usual I think what people will call um, countries which cre come up and create problems. So we've seen um, <coughs> Turkey being a problem child for much of the year, uh, Argentina in the second half of the year, very much so. Um, but uh, if one actually has a look at that, one can see just how much um, emerging market equities have actually underperformed. Uh, we're not really that much better than we were at the back end of last year, to be very, very honest, whereas uh, global developed markets, uh, particularly in Europe and North America, are up something in the region of about 20%. So the temptation for a rotation trade into emerging markets, particularly with currency volatility a bit lower, is obviously quite large. However, I think the interesting aspect here um, is if we go to my next chart, which is the emerging market bond spreads. Now, you would have thought with that sort of performance over the equity market, the bond market, uh, the, this is foreign currency debt of emerging market sovereigns, um, would actually have been suffering quite badly. But as one can see, since the beginning of the year when we spiked out, when we spiked out at the end of last year, we've tightened basically spreads in by something in the region of 120 basis points. And that is all the more remarkable when we come to my final chart, which I think is really quite amusing. Because what this actually tells us is that actually the um, growth in debt um, in emerging markets, particularly outside of China, this is uh, the FX denominated debt of non-bank borrowers, basically just to get an idea of where corporates are doing their financing, um, has basically exploded over the last 20, you know, 20 odd years. Yes, we had a big hiatus back in um, 1998, but basically since the end of 2014, we've been basically chasing our tails in this, and yet the spreads have been getting tighter and tighter, and it really shows where people's appetite for it is. But I think the lesson from Chile um, for, uh, that we've seen recently is that not every stable emerging market country, and the, one might say the same of Hong Kong, is necessarily going to be that way, and it's not always just the perennial sinners in Argentina or Turkey, uh, which are the riskiest markets around. So just a couple of thoughts to share with on those emerging markets at the moment.